Hey guys, Helen Hartsmith here again from the Heart of the Witch's Path YouTube channel. I hope you're having a good day. I totally am, especially with my, mm, my new mug. Mmm, nothing like fall and the coming of Halloween to get your witchy merch on, right? <laughs> so this is my new mug, uh, and I really dig it. I don't need a whole lot of witchy stuff because I've kind of been collecting it for a while. Um, but it's always nice to have a new mug, right? Mm. And especially when it's filled with delicious coffee. Mm-mm-mm. Mm -mm. So anyhow, I want to do a video today, and it's something that I've actually wanted to do for a while, and today is the day to do it. So I want to talk about runes, um, specifically making your own sets of runes. There's lots of places and companies and, and artisans and things like that where you can go and purchase your own set of runes, but I've always felt that because making your own set can be relatively easy, I thought, why not make your own set? It's probably one of the few divinations, like you could probably make your own set of Ogham to use for divination, but, um, and I guess people have made like their own tarot cards and stuff like that, but then you have to print them. But as far as like crafting a divination tool set, I think that, um, that runes are probably among the easiest and there are a lot of different mediums that you can use to make your own sets of runes. So I thought I would take you through some of the things that I've done or seen done and what have you and um, kind of get you thinking about, you know, ways that you might make your own set of runes. And so there's essentially three mediums that I'm going to talk about today. And I'm just trying to conceive of a way of how best to show everything. So I think we're going to go down to the table. Are you ready? Let's do it. Okay, so let's start with what is probably going to be the easiest method that you can use to make your own set of runes and that is by using stones and what I have here is essentially three different ideas that you can use these white stones here and these kind of blackish um, colored ones that have like some striations in it these are actually stones that I bought in a package in this package right here. So this is, these are some decorative stones that you can, and they were in like this bag. You can find these at your local craft store and they're generally going to be in the, the plant section. Um, so these are basically like a top dressing that you can put on uh, the top of your potted plants or you could act I think you could maybe not so much this white one because this white one is kind of porous um, which you'll see when I show you the example when I wrote on it um, so I don't know about putting these necessarily in like a fish tank but these ones are fairly smooth they've been tumbled pretty smoothly so you could probably use that in a fish tank as well so, um, and I want to say that those packages were right around $5, and um, so they're considered river rocks, and the package says that there's two pounds in a package, and there was, there was quite a bit. I mean, it was kind of, you know, like a two, two fist kind of size package, so there's actually a lot in there. About the only thing that you really need to watch out for is you want to pick up, because there's going to be ones in there that you can't necessarily use or probably wouldn't want to use, you want to look for ones like like this one that's fairly flat and has a, a flat surface 
area that you can write your runes on. Um, you wouldn't, you might not want to use this one, for example, because it's kind of almost triangle shaped. Um, so, but this one here, that's pretty flat, you, you know, might want to use that one. It's all kind of a, a preference for you. So yeah, so that, that is your possibility. And I have here some examples of ones that I wrote and I use the Gebu um, rune just for an example. So what I used to write on these are just some basic Sharpie, Sharpie markers. Um, depending on what color uh, stones you get, that's probably going to dictate the color that you want to use. Um, you also might want to look at getting uh, paint markers and those those you want to make sure to leave out and let dry completely but these ones that you're pretty much like ready to go you know right after you mark on them so this uh obviously we've got blue here we have this is what silver looks like and hopefully you can kind of see that on camera this is what the silver marker looks like and this is gold here just to kind of give you an example of what different colors might look like and then I've got one black one here one of the black stones that that has uh, the gold I use the gold on that now um, oh yeah I want to talk about sealing in a second so you can use markers you could use paint markers um, if you've got like a pretty steady hand you could also use nail polish to mark the runes on each one so you only need 24 for a set and so going this route you could actually make quite a few sets with something like this and have a, a pretty nominal fee um, or amount of money wrapped up into that okay you could also go the route that I've gone here with this set of runes these are actually lake stones that I gathered when I was on vacation um, and so I was where were we we were in Traverse City Michigan actually and so um, I we went to the um, the bay and there were a lot of river stone or excuse me um, lake stones that get tumbled naturally and so I just fished out fished out that's kind of funny I picked out 24 <clears throat> enough that I could do a set of runes with and then this is um this is a red sharpie that I used on these okay so you can go that route where you collect them and then there's like really no amount of money that you've and the and these are things that you've um, you've actually gone out and hand selected them. Um, I would suggest that in a case like this, if, if you wanted to go this route, you know, I would ask the spirit of the stones, you know, do you want to, do you want to work with me as a set of runes and, you know, kind of get um, a yes or no um, before collecting them and bringing them home. That's what I did with this one. Um, and you can kind of do the same things, like maybe when you're um, selecting your um, your bags. I mean, you can't really mix and match because they've already been put together for you. Um, but, you know, you might want to ask the package in general, you know, kind of a thing. And then the third set of stones I have here are actually some tumbled Labradorite that um, I have in my collection. Um, these ones, I, I came across some when I was at Earth Lore that they were like practically perfect. Like these are all like a really oval shape and they're not the same size and thickness, but they're in general the same shape and they're nice and flat. I And I didn't buy them for the purpose of making runes, um, but you could definitely go that route as well and you could do a set of uh, runes that are made out of crystals um, and so you could do that route now um, 
if this idea might seem a little basic for you, you could always up your ante. And if you have something like a Dremel tool um, with a diamond bit on it, then instead of writing the runes like, like this, you could carve the runes into the stone and then maybe paint the symbols inside them. Um, that's, you know, another possibility as well uh, with doing the stones. Um, and I would suggest that after you're done with your set, that you do some kind of a sealer on them just to kind of hold the the markings in place not actually none of these have i i haven't sealed any of these like these examples down here and this entire set i haven't um sealed them um but i this isn't my primary set of runes either so i haven't used them much um but i mean because they're markers it's easy enough to kind of go in there um, but if you were using nail polish, then I would really suggest doing a sealant. Either you could do a clear coat of nail polish, or there are spray sealers that I think would work on... Uh, oh, yeah, they would, because I have used them on another project. Um, it's a spray sealant kind of like spray paint that you could use on them to seal them. But like I said, since they're markers... It's easy enough that if they started to fade, I would just go back and um, and and just remark on them. And I really wanted to do red on this set because, um, according to Diana Paxson in her book, <clears throat> Taking Up the Runes, she talks about how red is kind of like the color of runes, and so red is like a really good color to use. Um, especially if you're um, part of what she suggested when reading that book was to take index cards and and basically make flashcards with the runes um, or um, use an index card to put whatever rune you're working with on your altar space um, and to use red for that purpose. Um, so um, that's why I wanted red for these guys. So, okay, so this, I think I've, I think I've covered everything. So these are um, ideas for using stones to make your own set of runes. All right, let's move on to the next example. So here we have some examples of the second media that I wanted to share with you. Uh, and that would be wood. Now, um, there are, this is like a, a little bit more of a skill level because it's going to require that you either have a saw or know someone that has a saw that, that can help you out with this. Um, I personally don't have a saw, but I know people who have them. So this, um, so, you know, that's how I've come to have my set here. So this is my set of um, runes done out of wood. These are actually maple. These are cut from a branch that actually came from Kathy's house. She had some, she had some limbs that were downed in an ice storm a couple of years ago and she had she was thinking ahead and she saved some branches and had her husband slice them so that we could use them to make our own set of runes so that you know it's kind of cool because these are this is from a tree that came from her property and so it's got like a really massive connection to her because it's her tree kind of thing on her property and it was something again that she made so as you can see here these runes are about an inch in diameter and the size of the runes are really kind of dependent upon what your preference is what becomes available and things like that so um You'll also 
notice that, um, so like I said, these are maple, and you'll notice that there's no bark on these. The bark all came off, which is fine. I'm totally okay with that. But what's really cool, and I hope you can see this, look at all of these um, markings around it. Those are actually like worms or insects or something like that that were like inside the bark of the tree so there's like some really interesting markings on the runes themselves so that was kind of cool might not have been healthy for the tree I don't know I'm not a forester or anything like that so I don't know anything about trees and their health but anyhow so like I said these are maple sliced about you know a half inch or so thick again that is your preference you know what you would want to do um and so and i would say that you know size doesn't matter these are actually some pieces of an apple tree that um our coven sister crystal um saved and um had sliced and given to us so that's kind of cool um and you can use you know bigger ones for other projects too like making bind runes for putting in things and what have you um now if you don't have access to someone who can help you slice things i have picked up this package again from my local craft store and this happens to be um birch um already pre-sliced and you just need to look in your your wood section and i want to say that something like this was right around in the five six dollar uh, range and I don't know if you can like see in the package but there are varying widths like this one here is like maybe three quarters of an inch in diameter this one right here while this one is more like maybe an inch and a half inch and a quarter um so they might not be the same um diameter but there was a there's 30 pieces in this particular package so there's more than enough in a package like this to get you a set of runes and you can have some left over and it's pretty cool that you know they identify that it's birch so you can um you can know what the wood is so that's kind of cool i've only seen birch in a package like this so you might be limited in what you can get but at least you can get something okay um you can again you can use sharpies to write your runes um onto your little discs or um on my set here I actually, um, I took a pencil first and drew the rune on each of the discs. And then I have this wood burner that I picked up at, again, a, my local craft store. And it was like really cheap. It was like right around $15. And it's a pretty basic one. There's like no, um, there's no heat controls on it or anything like that. It's just like one setting, but it does have different bits that just screw into the end here um, like that. And so obviously you want to do that when it's cool because this gets extremely hot. So this is probably not something that you want to have kids do uh, by themselves, but there's different tips and stuff like that depending on what you might want to use. But I found this method really, really easy when making my set. And um, I like it because it's not going anywhere. You definitely don't have to do any kind of a seal because, again, I've done no seal on this particular one or this particular set. I will say that what you would want to do is once you've got your slices done, you do want to take a piece of sandpaper and you want to uh, you do want to sand um, both sides especially the side that you're marking on because again it's going to be like super porous just like those white stones were and so if you were doing a marker for sure it would like it might run and get kind of gooky looking um, so you want to sand that so it's nice and smooth so when I make a set 
out of these birch ones, I can tell that they're really rough too. And so I'm going to want to sand them before I do any marking. And I'll probably do these um, and I'll wood burn them as well as these. So this is the second medium for making your own runes that I wanted to share with you. It's pretty easy. You know, it's kind of tricky to get it cut and that's about the, the hardest part. Okay. So let's move on to number three. And here we are at the third medium. This is my primary set of runes. These are my go-to runes that I use all the time and these are made from a polymer clay and they were a gift to me from Kathy and um, another coven sister. I've had these. This is my first set of runes, the ones that I've had the longest. Well, yeah, because they're my first set derp. Um, but anyhow, so th these are made from a polymer clay, like I said, and these are actually made from two different colors of clay that were swirled together. Now, okay, so these are actually my, like I said, they're my primary set of runes and the ones that I use the most, but I have never personally made a set of runes from clay. Um, just because I've made, um, I've actually made bind, bind runes for um, a, a house protection um, thing that, uh, that I, oh no, no, those were, anyhow, I've never made a set of runes from clay for myself. Um, so I'm not like super intensely versed in how it happens, but it's, pretty easy. You take the clay, you work the clay, you put it into, um, you form it into the shape that you want. Um, you, these are, have the runes carved out of them prior to being baked and then you bake them. So it's, it's a pretty easy method and polymer clay is relatively inexpensive, inexpensive. Uh, a package of clay, is going to run you three, four dollars at the most. And you might, depending on how big, these are, are quite large. So you might need two packages to do something this size. But, you know, if you did smaller ones, you might be able to get an entire set out of a package. That's just something that you'd have to play around with. Um, but these are like really cool. Like I said, they're, they're swirly. There's actually some glitter in them. I don't know if you're, if you can like really pick up on that, but, um, Kathy also has like this neat little texture on the back of them. I like them because I like the size. I like how, how big they are. They're pretty uniform in size. I mean, there might be some that are, you know, maybe a little, um, a little bigger or m maybe that's just how they appear or what have you. But these are like really easy to make too. Um, so like I said, you work the clay, um, you want to roll it out and it's easy enough to find, you could use a knife if you wanted and, and cut the shape or there's like little cutters, little like cookie cutter type things that you can buy. But I don't think you necessarily need that. Not when you can just use a knife. Um, because I mean, there's no sense in purchasing something if you're only going to do one thing with it, you know, and then not use it again. If this is something that you think that you might want to, you know, play around with clay more often, then you might want to look at um, getting some of the, the cool tools that go along with it, but it's not necessary. And then you can take, you know, like a, anything with a tip, you can take a, a, a chopstick, you can take a pen or whatever and carve out the runes in them and then bake them. And then it looks like they probably came back with a marker of some kind um, to actually write in the runes after they were baked. Now, something like this, I don't think you need to have a sealer. I don't think a sealer um, is used on something like this, um, but that's something that, you know, easy enough to do. You could probably use the spray one again, like, um, like I talked about with the stones. But again, I probably wouldn't use it. It's, it's not 
you know, like I said, these are my, this is my primary set and I haven't had any issues with any of the color coming out or anything like that. So here is the third medium polymer clay. Super easy, right? Yeah. Okay. So what'd you think? Three different mediums to make runes and it's really cool because they're done by you. And therefore, you really get your essence in it, you get your energy into it, and you're bonding with the set of runes straight out the gate. It's, I think that's like the best thing. I, I think I might have purchased a set of runes that I never used and I ended up giving away to somebody. Um, but I mean, I'm at the point now where any set of runes that I have, I would make for myself. Um, so there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did or learned something from it, give it a thumbs up. Yay! If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. i uh, love to have you come and check out what's going on here at the channel for sure. Um, there's all kinds of links in the description box for um, different social medias. Um, that's probably going to be the only links because I can't really think of any links that I could put in um, for anything that I talked about. I mean, I could um, I could look and see if maybe the wood slices are available on Amazon um, and the and the accent stones. If I I'll poke around a little bit and if I see something like that, then I can definitely um, put that in the description box. But I hope that you found this helpful and. I am a crafty witch. I might not necessarily be the best at creating crafts, but I sure enjoy it, first of all. And second of all, I think that there's definitely something to be said about creating the own, your own magical items as much as possible. There are certain things that, you know, takes a lot of talent and knowledge, like you're not going to see me crafting my own athame because I'm not a blacksmith or anything like that. So I'm not going to make my own blade, but I can definitely make my own set of runes. I can make my own robes that I wear for ritual. You know, I can make my own book of shadows and things like that. So I highly encourage you to kind of get your crafty fingers into something and make it. So what I do want to know is what medium did I have I not covered? There's a lot of mediums out there, I'm sure, that I haven't covered. These are just ones that I have, you know, personal experience with and wanted to share. So if you have made a set of runes out of something then that I haven't talked about, then I want to know, okay? I'm especially interested in anything that's like metallic because that is... Um, something that I've never, um, that I don't have. So I think that would be interesting. Like, how are you crafting it? And what are you using? Kind of geeked about that. So let me know. Um, and, and any other comments, questions, concerns, put those in the comments and I will try to address them as soon as possible. Okay. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching. Thanks for tuning in and taking the time to walk the path for a little while with me. Until next time, blessed be.